What if I were to tell you that when it comes to measuring, the imperial system is actually better than the metric system? Wait, 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 don't go yet. I have a point here. I'm sure that the Americans watching this have cautiously hopeful reactions, while everyone else is just shaking their head and thinking, ah, oh, not this again. So I admit it, the metric system is better overall. It's more standardized, it's better for science, and it makes for logical sense. You win. But hold on a minute and hear me out, because the imperial system does have some nice advantages you may not be familiar with. It didn't stick around for this long in America and some other countries just because people hate change. It has real usefulness. To find out why, let's dive in. The imperial system started as traditional British measurements exported around the world as the British Empire expanded. But after the French Revolution, metric measurements were introduced in Europe as a new, more scientific system to keep things standardized and accurate. This more advanced system quickly took over the world through the course of the next few centuries, but it was never quite adopted in few places. Liberia and Myanmar still use the imperial system, as does Canada to some extent, with the United States being the most prominent example of daily life entirely in imperial units. Most Americans don't even know the implications of Celsius, meters, or other scientific units. 16 kilograms? How many pounds is that? But despite America's mild protestation, the metric system has become synonymous with international trade and scientific measurement. But America still has the imperial system, and almost seems to take pride in its non-standard units. But why? Is it just a stubbornness against change? Is it ignorance to the benefits of metric measurement? What's the point? Well, I'm here to tell you that yes, stubbornness, scientific ignorance, and a lack of international thinking are definitely problems that influence this, but they are not the only reasons. And I'd go so far as to say they're not even the main reasons. Being a rather scientifically and internationally minded American myself, I've always questioned why it's so hard for me to let go of the traditional imperial units just to learn the metric standards. But I think I've found the answer. It all comes down to psychology. Let me explain. Let's compare some common measurements of everyday life to see the range they create. Let's start with lengths. Now consider this. From a purely scientific perspective, these systems are all totally arbitrary, and any of them work completely fine. But our international system and science is based around metric, so that must be the best, right? Well, yes and no. The metric system is definitely a great choice for technology with pico, nano, and micrometers as convenient ways to measure tiny components. You don't see anyone making circuit boards using a 1 ten thousandth of an inch measurements, do you? That would just be impractical. The imperial system isn't designed for that. But for big objects, it's more or less a wash. The Earth's diameter can be measured in miles or kilometers. In either way, it's a couple thousand. But our physics equations are derived around metric units to accommodate the very small. So for big things, we might as well use metric then for the convenience. But what about human-sized things? Human height? Around 5 or 6 feet. Or 1.5 to 2 meters. Also said as 150 to 200 centimeters. A regular-sized object we interact with every day? Probably around 1 foot. 0.3 meters or 30 centimeters. You can see now that the metric measurements are so fine to the point that one centimeter of height doesn't really add much on the human scale. Or the metric measurement is so long that adding a meter to anything human scale would completely break it. The measurement unit of feet corresponds to around the size of an actual human foot, while inches correspond to around the length of a human finger, give or take. Adding a couple inches to something makes sense, instantly, in a visual way. Adding a few feet to something also makes sense within the normal visual range. Basically, imperial units really shine when they're used for daily life on the human scale, as they were originally intended, due to their creation before the scientific revolution. If your kid grows an inch, that's pretty normal. If your kid grows a foot, wow, they grow up so fast. But if your kid grows by a centimeter, no one cares. And if your kid grows by a meter, you better hope he just aged from childhood to adulthood, 
or you should get him to a hospital. Another version of this is weight. You can use pounds or kilograms, and most people not used to imperial units probably think that kilograms are vastly better. But again, it's a matter of scale, literally this time. The average human range for weight is 100 to 200 pounds, depending on height and diet. This is around 45 to 90 kilograms. Now you could round that to 50 to 100 kilograms and say that both systems have a decent sense of scale, and that's fair. 50 to 100 is a fairly normal range of numbers that make sense intuitively, and so is 100 to 200. But here I'd like to propose that the difference is in the fine tuning. In this case, the imperial system has twice as much fine tuning over a wider range, getting more accurate measurement info without losing the scale's intuitive feeling. This also helps the imperial units for measuring small human scale things, such as pets for example. An average cat weighs around 8 to 10 pounds. A small range, but intuitive enough with some wiggle room in whole numbers. Meanwhile, with the metric system, cats measure around 3.6 to 4.5 kilograms? Hmm. Only one whole number of variation to work with, and both sides sit on awkward fractions. I guess we can just say every cat is around 4 kilograms, or we can use the more effective imperial system for this application. My favorite example of this actually comes from temperature, something often joked about by fans of scientific units for daily life. The most common joke is to point out that Celsius has water freezing and boiling at very conveniently intuitive numbers, 0 degrees and 100 degrees, while Fahrenheit has the awkward values of 32 degrees and 212 degrees? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Not to mention that Celsius can easily be converted to Kelvin while Fahrenheit needs this ridiculous formula. Yikes. Celsius wins at science, no doubt about that. But what about daily life? I would like to remind you that we are not made of fresh water, as Celsius lovers may wish, but actually that we are complicated saltwater machines. Allow me to demonstrate the intuitive power of Fahrenheit, not for science, but for daily life as a human. So in Celsius we have 0 degrees, which means really cold, 25, which means really hot, 50, which means you're burned alive, 75, which means you're totally cooked, and 100, which means you are literally boiling alive. Yay? Great job Celsius, the Fire Nation would be proud. Meanwhile over here in Fahrenheit, we have this convenient system. 0 means extremely cold, 25 means really cold, 50 is okay, 75 is warm, and 100 feels really hot. A great, convenient 0 to 100 scale for measuring how the weather feels to humans. Not good for science, but great for human daily convenience. And that's kind of my whole point here. Imagine there was no unit system in the world. You know nothing about metric or imperial, and you have to make up a new standard of measurement from scratch based only on your daily life experience. Assume that you have no knowledge of science, and that you're just trying to make the best survival you can for yourself, to make convenient measurements. If someone asked the weight of a small animal, you'd probably give an answer of 1 to 10. If someone asked your own weight, you'd probably answer on the order of maybe low hundreds proportional to the small animal. If someone asked a distance of something nearby, you'd probably give a 1 to 10 answer. And if someone asked for the temperature, it makes sense to give a 0 to 100 ranking based on how it feels to you. The imperial system isn't good for science, and it may be inconvenient for international trade, but it still serves a convenient purpose for the people using it today. So, learn your metric units, do science, and do international trade, but don't let people make you feel too ashamed of your feet, inches, Fahrenheit, and pounds. They may just be useful to you. Thanks for watching the video. I'm curious what you think, so let me know and comment below if you learned something new, and I hope to see you again next time.